Okay, she be gone, she be gone every single night And I own my pussy How's it going everybody? This is Top of Dropper. I hope you're having another great day and welcome back to another video. Alright, so there are a whole bunch of mysterious cases in this world and a lot of them have gone very strange and a lot of them have really had a lot of problems being solved as well. And a lot of references go back to the days of the D.B. Cooper mystery. Obviously, as we all know, this was one of the most mysterious cases in U.S. history in which he once jumped off an airplane back in the 70s with a whole briefcase full of money and basically was never seen since then. There are a lot of mysterious cases out there in this world, but I can't think of one any more hilarious and hysterical than the one back in 1982 in the world of NASCAR when one prankster attempted to enter a NASCAR race and got away without ever getting caught. Ladies and gentlemen, for this video, I'm going to be talking about the mysterious case of L.W. Wright, how he managed to infiltrate the starting field for a NASCAR Winston Cup Series race back at Talladega in 1982, and how he managed to get away with it without ever getting caught by NASCAR or the authorities. So for those of you that don't know, at the time in 1982, NASCAR was starting to become extremely popular, but back then, there were quite a few people that, even without a whole lot of experience, were able to get into NASCAR at a very later age, but a lot of the time, they had to have quite a bit of experience. Take L.W. Wright, for example. This is a guy that, according to previous reports and videos that I've seen on YouTube, had gotten away with quite a bit over the years, especially running from authorities when it comes to mysterious crimes and all of that, but the reason why I bring up this name is because he is most notable for one day when he tried to enter the 1982 Winston 500. Now this is a guy that had almost zero racing experience whatsoever, but he wanted to try to pull off a very hysterical heist of trying to enter a NASCAR race without any experience and, and see what he can do with it without getting caught whatsoever. And so what he did to try to enter this race was that he sent a few checks over to NASCAR along with then NASCAR driver Sterling Marlin to try to gain equipment and approval to try try to run in that race at Talladega in May of 1982. Now here's the thing that NASCAR and the Sterling did not know. Those checks were also pretty fraudulent and because of that they were really fake money so they didn't really realize that at the time and back in 1982 many people didn't really have the ability to recognize right away without a whole lot of technology that we have now to be able to recognize which checks happen to be fraud or not. So they let him get away with it and they basically went ahead and gave him approval to run the race and Sterling managed to give him a car and was able to enter the race there at Talladega. Now Wright also said that he was going to get sponsorship from a few country music stars as well. He said that Merle Haggard was obviously going to be one of them and maybe a couple other music stars but Merle said however that this was not true and this entire thing was made up so Wright said though that he was still going to speak sponsorship for future races and then see where things go from there but obviously as we all know that would never materialize. Now again as I said before this guy has zero racing experience. Experience. The only thing he's known for was getting away with, from the authorities with a whole lot of criminal activities. So a lot of the drivers, when they noticed him talking to them, they really started to get confused about who L.W. Wright really was and what his racing background was when he really didn't have any at all. In fact, a lot of them knew right away that he had no idea exactly what he was saying. I mean, Wright said that he had previously had some experience in NASCAR and auto racing when in reality he had just none. So that was a really interesting case and had they had the modern technology back then that we do now, they probably would have been able to recognize that he had almost zero racing experience whatsoever and that he likely had a criminal background. So obviously they did not at the time, so really they just let him off on the hook. So during that weekend, L.W. Wright would practice and he did end up having an accident during a practice session, but somehow despite a pretty slow time, he was able to make it into the field for that Sunday's Winston 500. He was starting near the very back of the field, but to see a guy that has zero racing experience and got away with quite a bit of criminal activity in the Winston 500 and actually make the race, it was really something to behold. Unfortunately though, not really much happened with L.W. Wright's day, you know, he was very slow and was really off the pace and really all the lies that he had said in the background prior to this race really showed that day. After 13 laps, he would end up pulling into the garage and end up going out of the race. Now, there were a lot of conflicting reports about what happened and how he retired from the race. Some said that he had a blown engine while other YouTubers have said that NASCAR Park him because he was just too slow. I don't really know. All that matters was that on lap 13, he was the second car out of the race. But it was after he left the race where things started to get really out of control. At that point, L.W. Wright 
bolted the track. He had taken all of his equipment along his car and just left the track in a hurry. And at the same time, that was the time that NASCAR realized everything that was really happening with L.W. Wright. During that time, they found out that the checks that they had gotten from him so that way he can seek approval to run the race were fraudulent, obviously. You know, it was fake money. You know, he tried to lie and cheat his way into the race. And so they did not realize that until after he had retired from the race. And they also realized too that the money that they had given to Sterling so that way he can get the car was fraudulent as well. And so obviously this guy was really a cheat and a liar. He basically lied his way to get into the race. And not only that, they realized right away that he had zero racing experience whatsoever. And really there was a lot of suspicion about him whatsoever. So obviously NASCAR will call the FBI and authorities to try to launch a manhunt against him and try to see exactly what happened to LW Wright and exactly where he went. But unfortunately, here we are four decades later and to this day, he has not been caught. And we are approaching now 40 years since this infamous event in NASCAR and much to everybody's surprise, nobody knows where LW Wright's whereabouts are still. Now obviously he would enter one more race the very next week at Nashville. However, he ended up failing to qualify for that race before completely disappearing from the public view. But this was such a very hilarious and embarrassing case for NASCAR because this really goes right up there with the case of D.B. Cooper or of mysteries that were ultimately never solved. And obviously this is a situation that NASCAR really doesn't want a whole lot of modern day fans to know about. But obviously this has gotten a lot of renewed attention as of lately. There have been a lot of YouTubers that have been doing a whole lot of investigating into this situation and some of them have even found new information regarding L.W. Wright's background. Obviously, like I said, there's been revelations about new criminal activity under him, especially with, you know, some of what happened after the Winston 500. And, you know, it's really interesting. But the thing is, is that we don't know if this guy is even alive or not, because at the time of the race, L.W. Wright was probably somewhere in his late 30s or early 40s or something like that. So if he is still out there, we really don't know exactly where he is, because at this point, we really don't know if he is alive or not. But still, that just goes to show you how wild this discovery was. So this really has got to be up there as probably one of the most intriguing mysteries in all of NASCAR and also all of sports because this is a guy that had gotten away with a whole lot of crime prior to doing this and the fact that he had managed to get away with this and now nearly 40 years later that he was still able to get away from running the Winston 500 without getting caught for his background, it is such an intriguing mystery and a lot of that has to go with the DB Cooper stuff because as I said before, this is a guy that had managed to sneak his way on a plane and do a whole lot of things in there and ultimately managed to jump out of it with a briefcase full of money and ultimately he never got caught. And so, you know, obviously that has been a case that has become one of the most infamous in the history of the United States and up to this point, even now, the FBI has still not been able to figure out what happened to D.B. Cooper as well as where he went to and if he's even still alive or not. But chances are D.B. Cooper would probably be dead by now because, you know, there was a lot of information about his age back then, probably somewhere in his 40s or 50s or something like that. But with all this renewed attention, there's obviously a lot of changes that have been made since in NASCAR, and obviously a lot of that has been requiring drivers to get experience in previous motorsports before going up to the NASCAR, and even get experience in the lower tier series of NASCAR. You know, all the divisional races in NASCAR, especially the weekly series, you also have to run an ARCA, and also race a little bit in the trucks and Xfinity series before getting up into the Cup series. And so obviously racing experience now is a major role into getting into the NASCAR Cup series. And also you gotta make sure that you know you're avoiding trouble from the wall and also being a good Samaritan as well. And that was not who LW Wright was. But yeah, I just wanted to reminisce this because it has now been 40 years since this event occurred and it is just still mind boggling that somebody that had gotten away from the wall was able to do this without getting caught and 40 years later we still have not figured out what his real identity is and where his whereabouts are right now. Time will tell whether or not we find out who L.W. Wright really is and with the new information we are learning we might be a little bit ever so closer to figuring out who L.W. Wright is and exactly what has happened to him since then. It's a very mysterious case and it goes up there with D.B. Cooper as one of the most mysterious cases in all 
all of America and so it's just something that's really a sight to behold and so it's just really interesting and intriguing case and so whether or not this mystery ever is solved I really do not know but this was the time when a guy that was running from the law managed to get into NASCAR to run a race and ultimately get away with it without ever getting caught by the 40s and most likely never will. All right guys, that's gonna do it for another video. Hope you all enjoyed it. As always, if you'd like to see more of my content, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when my latest video is released. As always, be sure to comment below for future suggestions for all my videos, whether it's vlogs, projects, or challenges, you name it, leave it in the comments below and I'll do my best to make them. As always, follow me in my social media, all the links are in the description below. That's gonna do it for another video. Hope you're having another great day. And as always, I hope to see all of you again in another video very soon. So long, everybody.